Well, g'day curd nerds. Welcome to another cheese making tutorial. Today we're making Gaviera. So yeah, this is a twist on the name Graviera, obviously. It's not the authentic recipe. Uh, there are, from what I know, uh, the PDO cheese gra uh, Graviera uh, is, uh, there are many ways to make it. So on the island of Crete uh, in Greece, they use 100% sheep's milk. On the island of Naxos, they use between 80% and... 100% uh, cow's milk with the other 20% if they're using the 80% version goat's milk. So I've chosen to make the Naxos version of of Gaviera. <laughs> I love that name. Gaviera. So uh, watch me make a 80% cow's milk, 20% goat's milk cheese. It's uh, It's very similar to uh, I think they've used a very similar recipe to Gruyere, uh, which is a Swiss cheese. And uh, yeah, it did remind me of that process. So anyway, let's get on and see how I made Gaviera. So I made a big mistake when calculating the milk ratios. I actually used 60% cow's milk and 40% goat's milk, but it won't matter in the end. It should have an amazing flavour. So don't forget to sanitise your equipment. I've got it all laid out there nicely, ready to go. So the ingredients for Gaviera are six litres or six quarts of whole cow's milk, two litres or two quarts of goat's milk, one quarter of a teaspoon of thermophilic B, which is Staphylococcus, Thermophilus and Lactobacillus bulgaris. Uh, one sixty-fourth of a teaspoon of Sacco LPRA protective culture. This is to prevent late blowing in the cheese. Three eighths of a teaspoon or two milliliters of calcium chloride diluted in quarter of a cup of non-chlorinated water. And three eighths of a teaspoon or two milliliters of single strength rennet diluted in quarter of a cup of non-chlorinated water. I'm using IMCU 200 strength. And you'll need an 18% brine solution. So heat your milk to 32 degrees Celsius or 90 Fahrenheit. I've just done that on the stove top to start with. And then I'm putting it into the water bath to continue uh, to keep the, the heat constant using a precision cooker. So just setting that up there, putting the lid on and then just check the temperature about 10 minutes later to make sure that it is indeed at the right temperature to start making cheese. So all ready to go. So add your thermophilic starter culture. I'm using one that we've got in the store, which is for Parmesan and mozzarella, but it certainly is a thermophilic B starter. Now I'm adding the protective culture. Now I've only recently found this. Uh, it's called Sacco LPRA, but more on that from Gav in a minute. Just sprinkle that over the surface of the milk. So what did I just add to the milk? Well, it's a protective culture. Uh, this version I'm using is from Sacco and it's called LPRA, or so LPRA. So it contains two strains of lactic bacteria. One is Lactobacillus rhamnosus and the other one is Lactobacillus plantarum. I hope I pronounced those correctly. So LPRA is a protective culture and it inhibits unwanted bacteria, yeasts and molds in your cheese. So I just wanted to try it out in the Gaviera to see if it made any difference. So I allow the cultures to rehydrate for five minutes. Just cover them up so no dust gets in there. This will help distribute them more evenly so stir them into the culture now that they're rehydrated. Let's give that a good stir, top to bottom, round and round. 
just make sure it's all thoroughly mixed through. Pop the lid on and we're going to allow it to ripen for 10 minutes. This creates a little bit of acid in the milk. So now we're going to add the calcium chloride. Now you only need calcium chloride if you're using pasteurized milk. So just stir that through. It adds a little bit more soluble calcium to the milk to allow the rennet, which I'm now adding, to work more efficiently and you get a better curd set. So stir for no more than one minute. And now we're going to allow the milk to set for 40 minutes. So now that the milk has coagulated, we're going to check for a clean break. Let's get my trusty curd knife. Let's turn it, see if we've got a good split. Check again, looks a little bit sloppy. So I'm going to cover that. I don't think it's firm enough, so I'm going to wait for another 10 minutes. So that'll be a total of 50 minutes coagulation time. So I'm just going to check for a clean break again. That's much better, much firmer. So we're going to cut into 0.6 centimeter or quarter of an inch columns. So I'm not going to do the horizontal cuts for this at this stage. So try and get them as small as you can with your curd knife. Now using a balloon whisk, we're going to stab that in an up and down motion to cut the curd smaller. So we're gonna allow the curds now to heal for five minutes to retain a little bit more way better. So after the healing time, we're going to Increase the temperature of the curds over one hour whilst we're stirring to 46 Celsius or 114 Fahrenheit. So the curds are quite small at the moment. They're going to shrink over the one hour for sure. Uh, if you don't think they're all cut properly, then use the whisk to do that to stir while you're stirring. So after the one hour, we're at 46 degrees Celsius, just spot on. The curds should be about the size of a plump rice grain. Perfect. So I've just turned the heat off there. And I've drained the water out of the Water bath, we don't need that anymore. Get that out of the way so I don't electrocute myself. Just popping the lid on there and we're gonna let the curds settle to the bottom uh, for about five minutes. This just helps drain off the curds a lot better. So I've got my cheese mold, I've got a medium to large basket. It's about a 900 ground or two pound basket lined with loose weave cheesecloth. Just drain your curds straight through it. I've got a colander under the basket just to help a little bit better. And with clean hands, get all of the curds out and into the basket. So use the whey to make the smoothest ricotta that I've ever made. So you'll see that later on in the video. But meanwhile, just pull down the cloth to make sure there's no wrinkles and then fold the cloth over and place the follower on top. Now we're going to pop that into the press. I'm going to press at 10 kilograms or 22 pounds for 30 minutes. So 30 minutes later, I'm going to remove the cheese from the press. 
and we're going to take it out of the basket, turn it and redress the cheese. Now just be careful, this is the first pressing. It may not have consolidated enough for you to turn it, but because the curds were fairly warm, they do knit together very quickly with this cheese. So just pop the follower back on and press again at 10 kilograms or 22 pounds for one hour. So after the hour removed from the press, take it out of the mold and turn it and redress it again. Looking pretty good. The rind has developed already, so that's a good sign that you're pressing the right amount of pressure. So pop it back into the press again. And we're going to press at a little bit heavier, 15 kilograms or 33 pounds for 18 hours or overnight. So the next day, fresh clothes, <laughs> remove the cheese from the press. Shouldn't be much whey coming off it at this stage. And the rind should be fully closed and ready to go for the next stage. So before we go any further, just check the pre-brine weight. And it weighed in at 917 grams or 2.02 pounds. Be a little bit heavier after brining because it would have absor absorbed some of the salt. But uh, not much more heavier than that. So that's a good yield. It's about 10% yield for this cheese. So I'm just going to freshen the brine because I did use it the day before for the uh, Guido's Hard Italian Cheese. So it needed a little bit more salt, so I gave it a good stir and then put in uh, two tablespoons of cheese salt. Or maybe one. Anyway, enough to freshen the brine to put a little bit more salt in it to make sure that the cheese did float. So it floats. That's a good sign. So brine it for eight hours. This will ensure that you don't get a cheese that's too salty, but it'll be just right. Now, I did turn this halfway through at the four hour mark, uh, but we're just going to take it out of the brine now. This is the end of the eight hours. I'm going to place it on a drying mat. Just pat it down with a piece of paper towel just to remove any of the excess brine. And now we're going to air dry it. Uh, for three days, I turned uh, a couple of times a day. So I chose to vacuum pack it. The LPRA protective culture I put in there because I didn't want it to late blown. It wasn't really about surface mold or anything like that. So I chose to vacuum pack the cheese for minimal maintenance. So I'm double sealing the, uh, the bag and we're going to ripen that at 10 to 12 Celsius or 50 to 54 Fahrenheit for five months. So you can do a natural rind on this. You wash with a light brine twice weekly for one month, then weekly for another month. Then stop washing, rub it with a dry cloth if any mold builds up. And then we age it at 85% relative humidity for a total of four to five months. So there's a color comparison to the cheese I made previously. So the Guido's was made with full cow's milk, a lot yellower than the Graviera. And you can see the ricotta that came out of the Gaviera uh, way. Anyway, back to Gav. So that was how you make Gaviera cheese, uh, similar to Graviera, but not the same. It's Gaviera. Uh, I've chosen to age this for 
five months in a uh, vacuum packed it. There is a way to make it with a natural rind. Uh, and I did add in the, um, the additional uh, starter culture that inhibits mold and yeast growth on the surface. I just wanna see how it goes in vacuum packing. I think this is an easier alternative for home cheese makers. Uh, so five months, I let it dry out. Uh, so five months maturation. I let it dry out, air dried for three days. So the rind was fairly dry, definitely touch dry anyway. Um, and it's not weeping any more way. So I thought it was fairly safe to vacuum pack it. If you press it in, it's a little bit moist. It's, 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 you can press it in a little bit. It's not rock hard, especially not at this stage since we've just made it. Anyway, uh, there'll be a taste test in five months time. I've scheduled it for, oh, 23rd of June, 2022. So I will see you then and we can do a taste test on the Gaviera. Well, I hope you enjoyed this cheese making video. If you did, give it a thumbs up. If you wanna see more cheesy content like this one, then don't forget to hit subscribe and the little bell to get notified of other cheesy videos. If you wanna buy ingredients and equipment to make this cheese, pop over to littlegreenworkshops.com.au. Anyway, thank you for watching Curd Nerds and I will see you next time.